My name is Brandon Hampton. I am the owner, CEO, and principal knife maker here at Melio Knives. Uh, I've been making knives for about 13, 14 years. Uh, I've done tactical knives, culinary knives, and anything I can get my hands on. Uh, but right now what we're going to be talking about is some of the differences between Japanese, German, and American steels. So the two major countries that have been known to make culinary knives are going to be Japan and Germany. Uh, German steels is very old school, western, world knives. They're known for having very good knives. They're mostly interested in not chipping. So with German steel you're going to find that there's a lot of impact resistance, but it doesn't have much hardness. So when it comes to really fine cuts through protein, uh, you're going to suffer in that aspect, but you're going to thrive in areas of uh, full butchery, breakdowns, uh, going through bone, and it's very easy to bring that edge back up again because the steel is so soft, hanging out at around 57, 58 HRC, the Rockwell hardness, the way we measure hardness in blade steels. The main benefits of German steel is that it's quick to sharpen, it rolls as opposed to chips, and it's very fast to, to hone or strop back to what it once was. The downside to their steel is going to be that it never gets quite as sharp as you might want if you're doing more delicate work or doing a lot of high-end stuff with proteins, like sushi for instance. The Japanese steels are all about high-end performance and they require a little more maintenance. So you're going to get some true lasers with Japanese steel because they have much higher Rockwell hardness. So they're going to be hanging around <coughs> anywhere between 61 HRC to uh, 65 for the really hard stuff. Uh, some of the specialty steels can get even harder than that. Uh, what you're going to be losing when you get to that high hardness is the resistance to chipping. So any kind of bones you might run into will chip the blade um, and then you're going to need to actually have some skill at a whetstone to get those out. If you ever look at your blade and you see those very small chips throughout it, it's actually more detrimental than seeing the edge actually rolled over. The edge rolled over is something that is easily correctable with a strop or a hone. Whereas chips actually require us to hit it back on a whetstone. Because what you need to do is remove all the material past the point of the chip. That's why there is a type of steel uh, that most people call their laminated steels or san mai where they'll have a very hard core of steel in the middle surrounded or clad by softer steel and what this has done is with a, an attempt to try to bolster very hard steel with a softer steel around it the problem then lies well even if the hard steel is exposed we'll say a 32nd of an inch a 32nd of an inch chip is a nightmare to get out so that's why it's imperative for us to use the most chip resistant and hard steels that we can. That way we spend the least amount of time on a whetstone trying to course correct when we chip our blades. Now, as an aggregate, you're trying to find the best hardness, which is how sharp the blade can get, and the best toughness in terms of durability when you're encountering these issues. Uh, the reason why I use American steels is because as an aggregate, the PM grade steels that I'm using have tougher steels than the Germans have at the hardnesses equivalent to the Japanese.